I'm so glad you, you joined me for today's surprise Get the Dirt. All summer, as part of this summer's library reading program, we have been getting the dirt on all types of themes. And what a better place to get the dirt than our library. Why? Because the library is full of dirt. How? Well, the, it's certainly easy to do. Discover new books and ideas. And so many of the things tend to be interesting. To discover interesting things in the library, you have to be reading. And when you discover interesting things by reading, you're definitely heading down another trail. Today's surprise theme is fun and games. I received two tubs through our library system that are full of games for us to try and in which to dig deeper. I see that many of these games have the company name Harsboro. In the corner of this Scrabble game. Let's get the dirt. Who is he? Harsboro is a syllabic abbreviation of the company name Hasenfield Brothers Herman Hill Henry Hasfield immigrated to the United States from Poland in the early 1900s. They started a company selling textile remnants in 1923. The brothers diversed their business over the years finally selling their first hit toy, Mr. Potato Head, or Mrs. Potato Head, in 1949. Harsborough purchased Mr. Potato Head from its inventor, George, George Leonard. The Mr. Potato Heads we have here are not the originals. Did you know the original Mr. Potato Head didn't actually come with a head? You heard correctly, a headless Mr. Potato Head. Let's get the dirt. George Leonard originally sold toy body parts to be stuck into fruit and vegetables. Since this was just after World War II, people were still remembering food rationing, playing with your food was considered wasteful. Though careful marketing and through making Mr. Potato Head the first toy advertised on television commercial, the Hassenfield brothers made Mr. Potato Head a success. Let's get, get the dirt on some Hasbro games. Do you know that as I researched these Hasbro games, all these that the company made, I found that while these games bear the Hasbro tra trademark, the symbol that only company can use and provides, the company's ownership. These games are really owned by other companies. Do you remember how I said the Hassenfield brothers diversed their business? Part of that di diversifying was buying other businesses. Let's get the dirt. Scrabble was invented in 1939. It was originally called Criss Crosswords after Mosher Boots' invention. It wasn't successful until James Brunot bought the rights to the game and made the rules easier and named it Scrabble. Scrabble requires the ability to spell words, but it is a great tool to help learn spelling skills and that words have Q's with no U's. Jenga bears the Hasbro trademark. But it too was originally owned by another company. Actually, many companies, a long one, which was Milton Bradley. Jenga comes from Swahili word Kru Jenga, which means to build. Though not a game of African people, Jenga comes from Ghana, Africa. Leslie Scott, the inventor, was a British national raised in Ghana. The game was originally a family game played with children's box. What you would do with Jenga, Jenga is the goal is to take out as many pieces as you can without the top tower falling over. One of my favorite things to do is I, and you can't do one of the top two. 
So I, you would push out, say, this one, for instance. And then you would put it on top of the tower. You want to get the loosest ones possible. Because when they're loose, that means they aren't being needed to hold the tower up. when you are taking the tower apart you have to be very careful because if you bump the tower you lose the game sometimes you can find a good block just by tapping others Jenga, they also have games called Giant Jenga. Giant Jenga is where it's the game Jenga, but the blocks are a lot bigger. Oops, when it does that, that means the game's over. Skills needed for Jenga are patience and a steady hand. Twist Earth is another game bearing the Hasbro trademark, but it too was originally owned by Milton Bradley. Apples to Apples is a party game. It has gained popularity for its sometimes raucous debates over the winner of a round as the judge can choose the winner a bit arbitrarily. Sometimes you get cards that have nothing to do with the subject. For instance, one time I was playing and it was the the card we were trying to match our cards to was hard working and the two cards we had left were waterfalls and chameleons very hard choice for the judge what do you think was more hard working a waterfall or a chameleon the waterfall one Apples to Apples is owned by Mattel and is our next game. Skipu, Skipu. It's basically a competitive solitaire game where players compete to get rid of their pile of 30 cards by making stacks of cards numbering 1 to 12. Those stacks are in the middle of the table. Skipu by many other names when played with a regular deck of cards, Mini Hazel, Skip, Bauman commercially marketed the game in 1967. Do you remember me mentioning that Jenga was made originally marketed by another company, Milton Bradley? I found two books on Milton Bradley, so let's get the dirt. Board Game Builder is a chapter picture book written by Lee Slater. Who Was Milton Bradley is a fun-to-read chapter book, part of the Who Was, Who Is, What Was, and so on series. Both of these books cover the basics of the person Milton Bradley. Milton Bradley was born in Maine in 1860, 1836. Though in genuinely and perseverance, he marketed his favorite work, The Checkered Game of Life. Hard to get to, but this is it. Checkered can describe the pattern you see on page 11. Wrong book. But it can also mean having ups and downs, good times and bad. That's called a double meaning. And the game proved popular and remains popular today. Today we know it, know it as the game of life. Or life. The object is to be the player with the most money at the end of the game.
is like a game called Dominoes. Except that was unintentional. You tried to do that in Dominoes. Or do you? Battleship started out as a pen and paper game during World War One. One would make a grid on paper outlining their ship placements. The opponent would go to this do the same. Players would take turns guessing where other players' ship was located on the grid. This is what one of those grids would look like halfway through a game. M Milton Bradley marketed the game in 1967 using plastic pieces. Connect 4 has numerous names but is originally but its origin is elusive. In 1974, Milton Bradley Company marketed it marketed it marketed it as Connect 4. But as you can see from the box, Horsboro owns the rights today. It's a simple game. Putting putting it together, that's not as simple. See what you have is you have this, which so check it pattern. And this person would have a color, e color, either red or yellow. The goal of the game is to get all of yours into a row of four, thus connect four. See, and the other person's goal is to block it from happening. So Mr. Yellow is going to try to get four in a row, and Mr. Red is going to try to stop him. And look, yellow one because yellow has one, two, one, two, three, four. And when you've done the game, there's a really fun way to get things done. That's probably my favorite part of the entire game. was invented in 1974 by a Hungarian professor named Inario Rubik. In 1980, it became a popular, popular in the United States. It took Inario one month to solve the first time. There are over 42 quintillion possible ways to move the blocks, but not only one solution. Go through the instructions takes about 45 minutes, but the genius work, of, but the genius book of world records lists Yu Sheng Du of China as solving the puzzle in 3.45 seconds. I can't even solve it in years. That's how good he is. 
the Magic Fidget Ball, which is one of my favorite types of fidget toys, is a fun fidget toy. What you do is you have colored balls in a colored ring. And to start the game, all the balls have to be mixed up into patterns so they're not in the correct color of ring. You want to do this randomly and it gives the game a challenge. If you don't do it randomly, the game doesn't have a challenge. Now that it's sufficiently mis mixed up, the goal is to get the color into the original hole. So for instance, if I move it right here, the red can go here, and the pink can then go into the other hole with the pink. The red can go back into the other hole, and now this one can go right there. It's a very fun game, and you can use it to help you strategy. It's a great game for strategy, really. If you do these for a while, you can get down, so you can do them pretty fast, actually. Once you're done, every ball should be in the correct color. These mini puzzles, there's a whole bag full of them, so I'm not going to show you all of them would be a great time clusters in the car. You see, you have to get these triangles flat, and then you have to try to get the balls in the triangles through the open doors. It's a tricky game, but it looks fun. As is the Eureka 3D Amaze Ball. This ball is actually a maze. The goal is to get the bead from one end of it to the other end by going through the maze. Once it's at one end, there's a little hole and you want to get it through. And when it drops through the hole, it will go to the direct other side of the ball. So you can start all over again. Chess is a game on checkers. They both have the same sort of board. And the goal is, with chess, is you have all these pieces, and each piece represents a person, a place, or a thing in medieval days, and the goal is to get your side to get the king, and you want to kill the king, not really kill, you want to knock him off the board, and how to knock him off the board is something from your color has to land on the exact same square that he is on, and each piece can move in its own way. No two pieces can move the exact same way, unless they're repeats of the same piece. Bishops can only move diagonally. Pawns can only move forward. Um, castles can only move forward, backwards, or side to side. Queens can move any direction they like. And kings can move any direction they like, but only one space. Backgammon dates back to about 5,000 years. Dates back about 5,000 years in Mesopotamia. Chess has been played for about 1,500 years, probably stemming from a game in India. Checkers, like backgammon, hails from Mesopotamia, probably around 3,000 years ago. Chess is child's play. By Lauren Sherman was a book my mom used to help us learn how to play chess. We liked the mini games we played, adding one piece at a time as the book progressed. In the 1900, the 19, the seven, nine, the 790s, 
is a great place to start get to get the dirt on how to play these and other games. If you'd like to get the dirt on some amazing facts about toys and games, the Genius Book of World Records has an edition of their book called The Genius Book of World Records, Toys, Games, and More. So did you have a favorite game we discussed today? Is there one you are interested in learning how to play? Thanks for joining me for today's Get Surprise, Get the Dirt. Be sure, be sure to join us next Friday for another Surprise Get the Dirt. Until then, be sure to get the dirt at your local library, because the law library has books about everything you can imagine, and it is a great place to be. See you next time.